welcome to the Eating Cafe. My name is Belinda Dabston, and it is wonderful that you are here with me for our weekly eating overview for the week commencing the 8th of April 2024. And happy solar eclipse day to you. Remember to watch if you can and wear those cool goggles. Okay, so let's get into this episode. And of course, we always start with a recap from last week to remind ourselves what the flows were we working with and sometimes the big ahas come in the week after when we reflect back not necessarily in the moment when we are doing the doing so uh, last week we had hexagram 27 nourishment our mouths were open our mouths were sharing nourishment with others and we were learning all about where are we starving physical emotional mental spiritual what aspect of our life are we trying to nourish ourselves with the wrong things at the wrong time with the wrong people and how can we get back to what's really going to feed us on whatever level we are working on and of course how do we feed others how do we serve others with our words and lift others up lots for us to pay attention to last week where we worked with our Self-pity, all right? We've got a kick in the butt from the I Ching last week saying, change your attitude, get out of envy and self-pity and into action. And of course, we were given permission to be like the tiger and vigorously go and pursue the resources we need, the nourishment we need. Then we also had Hexon 35 progress, a lovely energy of the sun rising up, the opportunity to get somewhere on some important issue. And of course, so... Something came up for you. If there was something evidential that you'd like to share with everybody, it'd be great to have a comment on that. I hope that you had a wonderful week. You got the food that you needed, whatever food that was, and you made some wonderful progress. So let's get into this week, this week of the 8th of April. What are we paying attention to? What is the particular special flow the I Ching is directing our attention to? And it is hexagram 13, Fellowship. Yes, this is all about how we work harmoniously with others, how we collaborate and how we work towards achieving something as a fellowship. So as we work with this week, what is going to come into our awareness and our attention are collabs, working with others, groups, associations, partners, suppliers, friendship circles, fan clubs, uh, hobby craft, collectives, whatever it is that you are connected to as a person working with an association of people towards something unifying, a harmonizing goal, that is what we are learning to master this week. We can use the energy of the hexagram to tap into our fellowships to achieve something with them this week. Usually what I find with the hexagrams is they tune us in like a radio station into a particular facet of what's going on around us at all times and in this case it's fellowships how we work happily merrily harmoniously with others to achieve a shared common goal and so i encourage you not to try and hunt down where this association might be in your life but just let the eaching come to you as things happen to you in this week as insights come to you it'll go ping in your mind and you'll think oh fellowships this is an association Am I harmonizing with this group? Are they harmonizing with me? Are we working towards the same goal? What's happening? And using this energy this week to bring some healing and some movement and progress and maturing to this aspect of our world, be it a business association, personal association, whatever part of your life this may connect to. So this week we have three changing lines, which means there's quite a lot of action around fellowships. And there are quite challenging lines, okay? So we are probably going to face a little bit of stickiness and development and challenge around fellowships that we're a part of. And I affirm for all of us that these changing lines bring opportunity to bring healing and to release stuck energy and to move things forward. So let's get into the changing lines. In the first position, right? You remember this line is new, what's coming in through the bottom, Right? what's emerging and with this uh, changing line it talks about a new fellowship that is forming so just on the changing lines remember that there's three so this might be three different fellowships across business and personal right or a work and personal that it might be connecting you to what might be connecting you to the same one or one or two 
in different ways. So just stay open. That's all we can do. It'll come to us when we see it. We'll go, oh, yes. Okay, here's changing line one. So changing line refers, one, refers to a new fellowship. So we are all huddled outside the door, right, before the threshold, and we are standing in a group. And we're grouped together because we're standing in proximity to each other. And our task now is to go through the door together, to start the fellowship together. What we have to do is we have to make sure that the fellowship principles are in place, which means we are there for the same reason. We've got shared interests and to create connections between people. It's almost like we, we've been called to be here. We don't really know what we, why we're here. We're just standing at the door waiting to go in. What we have to do is do some work to connect everyone together, to connect everyone to why we are here, what this fellowship is about, what are we aiming to achieve, what is the harmonizing principle that sits at the heart of what we're trying to do. And then once we have just kind of formed it a little bit, and then we move through the door. Okay, so this will refer to anything where there's a new fellowship. And the strategy with this line is to create connections and connect the dots for people with each other, and then we cross the threshold. Okay, we don't cross the threshold as this kind of random group of people who are together but are together because we share a space. We happen to know each other. We happen to engage with each other. You know, we, we're doing this because we're in each other's universes as opposed to it being a connection between people we move together as a cluster. Okay, that's changing line one. In the third position, remember, third line is usually a little tricky because we're hitting the threshold and moving from one part of the tri the hexagram. We're moving from one part of the hexagram from the bottom to the top. And we've got this little chasm we've got to cross. We're about to cross in line three. Line three tells the story of we are hiding our treasures under a bush and we are sneaking up to the top of the hill the dead of the night and with infrared binoculars, whatever they're called, we're looking down into the other fellow's camp, the other party's camp to work out what's going on. Secrets and spying. Okay. This will refer to some fellowship where for some reason things have got to a place where we feel we need to protect our interests and be secretive and we need to spy on the other party and try and work out what they're doing. Okay. Because they're on the other side of the hill. We can't have direct access so we're going to spy and look in at the dead of night. Okay. So there's something underhanded or secretive or behind the scenes or undercover that is being referred to here. Now, there's nothing wrong in our associations with other people of getting quality data and being mindful and keeping our critical faculties alert. You know, you've got treasures, right? If there's evidence that those treasures will be taken, you take precautions and you get good data. Right? You secure your assets. But here what's happened is kind of there's a mistrust that has evolved. Things have degenerated to a point where we are in this mindset of burying our treasure and sneaking to the top of the hill and spying. And the challenge with this line is that ultimately nothing good can come out of perpetuating this behavior. Okay, So what can happen is all that we see is we see the data of the reasons why we can't trust the other party because we are mistrusting. Okay, It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. We are going about this behavior and the behavior of sneaking around and hiding creates mistrust, all right? And that mistrust snowballs even if there isn't good data to support the mistrust. So that's what we can take responsibility for. We can challenge ourselves to say, are the secrets in the spying necessary and valid? How do we deal with the place that we've got to? And how do we make sure that we don't degenerate into a deep mistrust that can never bring these two parties together, that can never reconcile the two parts of the picture? How do we manage that? Okay. And there's no specific guidelines around the strategy you must take other than understand that perpetuating this behavior is going to lead you into a place where you can never come back from it. It will kill it. The situation. So whatever this association is, uh, the process we, we have got to, right? We have got ourselves into the space of hiding and spying. And that will very easily take us over the edge and take us into a place where the association cannot 
be healed. We are very far from the idea of a harmonious, collaborative situation. Rightly or wrongly, it's almost irrespective of how we got here, what the process is. The fact that we're in this energy, we have to pay attention to not letting it go all the way to the end. It's important. Okay, <laughs> and then our next line in the fourth position. Well, we've got across that chasm, okay, there's uh, a disagreement. We've overcome slightly. We're in the movement towards a place of harmony, okay, we've crossed that bridge. But the image that's shown is in our city, we have climbed the ramparts or the top of the city walls, and we're sitting there, and we're, you know, taking care of our domain. And the city following on, the other party that we perhaps were spying on before has climbed their wall and is looking after their domain. And at least we aren't fighting. We can't fight because we've been separated onto the tops of each of our cathedrals or towers or, you know, castles. Give it a symbol. And so there's no fighting. But there are issues. In a way, we have kind of two boxes that have been put in opposite sides of the ring and we've got a time out. We can't hurt each other for now, but it certainly isn't a place yet where we have gone past the issue at hand. So working with this line, okay, what we have to do is accept the time out, see it as not the victory, but as a way of regaining a sense of control over our castle, getting to a place where we aren't fighting, where we can actually just focus on what it is that we need to do, and recognize that there isn't a harmony. There's a, not a peaceful truce. There's a truce by separation. Okay, a timeout for now. The issue still needs to be addressed. Woo, okay, so I foresee lots of interesting people dilemmas. We've got this kind of crowd gathering at the gate that we need to get on board. Okay, we need to sew up together and then move through the gate. We've got the spying and the secrets. We've got, you know, the stalemate, but at least it's not fighting. What do these things mean for you? As we work this week, stay open to where we are challenged in our associations, how we deal with others, how we are interacting and working towards a harmonious goal and let us be the superior people and do it differently. Be the master and work with this energy in a new way and to transcend beyond the immediate challenges and the disagreements we might be in. So where do these changing lines lead? Well, it's very interesting because we had our last changing line. We were sitting on the top of the castle, right on the wall, separated by a big moat in distance to the other castle. So we had a timeout because hexagram 20 contemplation is our outcome hexagram, our relating flow, our victory hexagram for this week. This hexagram is all about climbing to the top of the tower, right? Whether it's the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower, whatever tower or, or high place, and that's where you are. Think about that. What you feel when you go to the top of the tower and you get there and you look down and you see how everything is connected and you have a bigger perspective. You're not stuck in all the detail on the ground level. We are now eagles soaring in the sky, looking down. And what we see is we see perspective, we see connection, and we kind of see the strategy. We see the long distance picture we're trying to build. We see the strategy of how we're going to get there. We see the players. We see how all these bits fit together. And we come down off the tower and we bring that perspective back into what we we're doing. So perhaps we need to stay on the top of the castle wall for a while. Part of that process is getting that perspective and seeing what's really important having a strategic mindset, a bigger picture mindset, and that is a way that we can perhaps move through some of these sticky people association issues this week that have come to bring us some development and challenges that we have to work through, the bigger picture. That is always going to be our saving grace this week. So whenever you hit that difficulty and you're in an association where it's sticky, What's the bigger picture? What's the bigger picture? What's the bigger picture? The last thing about hexagram 20 that's really important is as much as it's a symbol of us climbing a tower to get perspective, we are also at the tower. The symbol of the tree on the hill is associated with this hexagram and brings us this imagery of being something that can be seen for miles. Okay, Being a symbol of the leadership, of stability, of vision, 
of kindness, whatever that word is of principle, that we are a symbol of that, that people look up to. And we don't perhaps even realize to what extent that we are so visible right to our community and those around us. And so our actions to be impeccable are really important. Being that tower, being that beacon for others to look to as a reference point, the hill, the tree on the hill, we can see that tree for miles. People are watching and people are taking from our actions what good looks like. And so the pressure is on to be good, to be in principle, to need, again, be a beacon for others on how to do the same. Thank you so much. If this was meaningful to you, please a like, thumbs up would be great. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you are new on the podcast version, you hit that follow and the episodes will come straight into your app as they are published. I look forward to seeing you next week very soon at our weekly overview. And if you're not connected to the monthly overview for April, go and reconnect with that as we work with the next changing line in a very busy month full of interesting things for us to work through. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon.